Alright, buenos dias mis amigos. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, just address this comment here and saying yes, I did misspeak. I said uh, something to the effect that uh, knowledge today is not as great as what it was. And I, what I meant to say is knowledge of the truth of the Bible is not as great as what it once was and the knowledge of the world has certainly increased but there's a difference between the knowledge of the world which is vanity and the knowledge of the truth which is Jesus Christ All right, so um, I just want to clear that up uh, if you want to have a discussion on that I, I would certainly welcome that um, and of course uh, the point I was making in the video is that things are getting worse and worse and worse. The deception is is growing and growing and growing. And fewer people have the knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ than ever before. And that's why we see uh, Jesus asking the question, uh, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth? Okay. Just want to clear that up because I knew when I said it, I I didn't say knowledge of the truth. I just said knowledge. Anyways, who cares? Let's continue. All right. So there's two videos here I want to share. Real quickly. All right, Pastor Jimmy Pickett. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Jimmy Pickett, and the verse I want to share with you today is Revelations chapter 20, verse 4. Um, if you read the first three verses, it's talking about the return of Jesus Christ, folks. Alright, so I won't make a big deal out of him saying Revelations. Okay, it's not Revelations. It's Revelation. No big deal. What is a big deal is blatantly lying about the Bible. Chapter 20, verse 4. Um, if you read the first three verses, it's talking about the return of Jesus Christ, folks. And I... Alright, so, I mean, if anybody's ever read this, I don't know how you could even make that statement. Uh, you know, it's guys like this that are preying upon people, taking advantage of people that never read the Bible. Alright, but I do read the Bible, and I take this pretty serious. Revelation chapter 20. I'm going to read the first three verses. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. That's not Jesus coming down from heaven. What's he say exactly? It's not, it's not the return of Jesus Christ, folks. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. That's not Jesus Christ, folks and cast him into the bottomless pit that's not Jesus Christ folks and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season uh, none of this is talking about the return of Jesus Christ folks All right, so this guy is just lying right out of the gate and this is the kind of people that are teaching this thousand year reign of Jesus Christ that is not mentioned anywhere at all in the Bible. Alright, so let's go to another video. I mean, when they start, one lie is enough. When you tell one lie, you ruin the whole thing. Your whole message is no good. Now let's go to this guy here. Let this mind be in you. Alright, so let's Listen to what he has to say. Part in the first resurrection, on such the second death, verse number six, hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, who are these priests? These priests are not us. We've never been given the promise to be priests. All right, so <laughs> this is your experts right here. Oops, let's go here. These are your experts. This guy and this guy. These are the guys that are preaching 
this idea that a Hollywood movie called The Left Behind is the true gospel of God, that they're putting their hope in this Hollywood movie that is absolutely not true at all. And they are preying upon people that do not read their Bible. They're taking advantage of you folks that don't read the Bible. They're taking advantage of the lost. All right, you think about Jesus. He has come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And so when we're called to preach the gospel to every creature, we're called to go out there and preach the gospel to the lost, that they might have eternal life like we have eternal life. Okay. So let's, he, he's referring to, um, you know, uh, let's see, where are we at here? And But they shall be called priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And of course his claim is that we are not uh, called to be priests. Now let me, just in case, you missed it. I'll reign with him a thousand years. Now, who are these priests? These priests are not us. We've never been given the promise to be priests. All right, so uh, in First Peter 2, chapter 9, or chapter 2, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. All right, so if you've never read the Bible, you wouldn't know about this. But here in First Peter 2, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation now we can go to Exodus 9 and see that God says to the, um, Mos Moses that and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel so the children of Israel are called a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. And here in First Peter chapter two, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. And of course, had you read even the first chapter of Revelation. you would have saw that, hey, Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. So you, you couldn't have been more wrong. You're just flat out lying. And there's, you know, one thing to be wrong, and there's another thing to be a liar. And that's what these guys are doing. They're lying. And being wrong is, I don't think, is an excuse, is it? I mean, you better get it right. If you're wrong, you better start getting it right because you're giving the appearance of a liar. All right, and so I just want to show this that, you know, these guys that, you know, you th maybe think that are experts and scholars. They're all liars. It's not what the Bible says. Not what the Bible says at all. And I guess um, one more point and then I'll uh, end it here. Make it short. <clears throat> Alright, so let's see. Yeah, this is it. Okay, so this guy here, I can't, can't say his name. He says, Jesus is the King of Kings, so while we rule on the earth for a thousand years, Jesus will physically be there too, ruling on the earth. And by the way, Revelation 20 is not the only passage about the millennial reign. Excuse me. <coughs> In the Old Testament, it mentions every nation coming to Jerusalem to worship Jesus, meaning he will be physically on the earth. How can you plainly see? How can you, how you cannot plainly see that is beyond me. All right, so there's no mention in the Old Testament anywhere at all about a thousand year period. 
All right, when, it, when it's referencing uh, Jesus in Jerusalem, and uh, it's, this is obviously in reference to uh, the life to come after his return. I mean, it's as obvious as can be. When Jesus returns, it's the end of the world, and there's a new heaven and a new earth. All right, so this reference to Jerusalem and the Old Testament is in reference to the heavenly Jerusalem which is above and the Jerusalem which is above is the mother of all uh, mother of us all all right where are we at here Here, let me, maybe I better do it this way. All right. And Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Okay, so the holy city of God is above. All right. And Jesus even, and this is all throughout the Bible, okay? So in John chapter 14, Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so. I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also all right not talking about an earthly Jerusalem but a heavenly Jerusalem all right and that's where we put our our hope into is eternal life we are not putting our hope into a thousand year bonus bonus thousand years that's not we're, we're not putting our hope in that at all all right and of course uh, revelation 21 verse 2 and i saw and i john saw the holy city new jerusalem new jerusalem coming down from god out of heaven so there's only one jerusalem there's not going to be two jerusalems on earth there's going to be one the new the holy city so this idea that there's a thousand year period coming and I'm telling you all these people they're doing it because they saw a Hollywood movie called Left Behind and they're imagining a bonus thousand years of sexual activity alright you get you cannot tell me that these guys aren't preaching hey if you're not saved don't worry about it wait till after Jesus comes and then you can be saved these guys are preaching things that only come from the devil alright they're liars they're preaching false doctrines and they're dissuading the lost from being saved today you know think about this can anybody wait until after Jesus returns to be saved when is the best time to be saved all right now think about this and tomorrow's not yet promised there's no guarantee you're going to be alive tomorrow and have the opportunity to be saved tomorrow. All right, so if you're saved right now, you're good. But what about the lost? And like I said in the beginning, Jesus has come to call the right not, Jesus has come not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. All right, so we are called to preach the gospel. We want to preach the gospel to the lost so that they might have the same opportunity that has been given to us. Alright, so um, where, where am I at here? Alright, so this, this day is salvation come to the house. So, this is not the verse I wanted, but that's a that supports what I'm going to say here is that today is the day of salvation. All right, today. So if you're lost, today might be your last chance to get saved. All right, don't believe the Hollywood movie uh, Left Behind. All right, so I'm not sure exactly what. Right here. Okay, found it. 2 Corinthians 6. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succo succo succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now 
is the day of salvation. All right, so you do not want to give the lost any false hope of, well, you can wait, because they can't wait. If they're not saved today, if you don't preach, today is the day of salvation. You're misleading them. It's one thing to mislead people that are saved because no worries, they're saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. What we want to do is preach the gospel to the lost and let them know, hey, you have an opportunity for everlasting life today. Do not put it off any longer. All right. And so, and that's the problem. This is the biggest problem I have. I mean, it's evil, it's cruel to teach this idea of a thousand year period coming after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And I'll end it on this right here. I mean, there are numerous examples I could give, but let's just look at one. And the most obvious is that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, men's hearts will be failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven why are people having heart attacks why are they why are their hearts failing them for fear because they know that time is up there are no more opportunities for them to be saved yeah, that's it Right, so anybody that says there's a thousand year period coming after Jesus Christ returns, they are of the devil. They are a liar. And it's time we, we fight back. I mean, if you are born in the Spirit of God, fight back because this is what we're up against. There are liars everywhere. All right, have a good day.